Pericles was known as the Prince of Tyre. He was an enemy of Antiochus, the king of Antioch. He was in so much danger from Antiochus that his counselor, Lord Helicanus, advised him to travel the world. So Pericles took his advice, even though his father had just died, and made him king. Instead of taking the throne, Pericles appointed Helicanus regent and left the kingdom. Shortly after Pericles left, Lord Thaliard arrived in his kingdom from Antioch on a mission to kill Pericles from Antiochus himself. When Helicanus heard of this, he sent a message to Tarsus to inform his king. Pericles did not receive the message, and he decided to set sail from Tarsus once again. But he was unfortunately shipwrecked by a storm, and he was the only survivor. He washed up on the shores of Pentopolis, which was ruled by King Simonides, and he was rescued by some fishermen. They clothed him and offered to feed him at their homes, and told him that he should be merry, because it was a time of celebration in Pentopolis. There was going to be a tournament the following day, where knights and princes would compete for the hand of King Simonides' daughter. Pericles was saddened that he had lost all of his riches and could not compete in the tournament. But just as he lamented this aloud, the fishermen pulled their nets in, only to find that they had contained a rusted suit of armor. Upon closer inspection, Pericles realized that the armor was his, which was gifted to him by his late father. He begged the fishermen to allow him to take the armor to the tournament, and promised to reward them greatly if he ever recovered his riches in exchange. They readily agreed, and he set off for the king's court. Pericles found victory at the tournament and was bequeathed the wreath of victory, which was given to him by the princess Thysa. When the princess asked him who he was and where he was from, he claimed to be a knight from Tyre, so as not to give away that he was the king to Antiochus' assassins. Thus, Pericles and Thysa were wed. While this was happening, King Antiochus died, and the residents of Tyre, who had not heard any word of their king, called for Helicanus to take up the throne. Helicanus, however, was still loyal to his king, and so he agreed to take the throne only if Pericles did not return within a year, and then proceeded to send messages far and wide to find Pericles. In Pentopolis, a messenger finally found King Pericles, and he was informed of his people's discontent and the death of Antiochus. So, Pericles informed Thysa and King Simonides of his true origin and title, and they rejoiced. Pericles took his wife and set sail back to his kingdom to resume his throne. Unfortunately, Pericles once again encountered a savage storm on the open ocean. While attempting to navigate the storm, he was informed that Thysa had given birth to their first child, a daughter, and in the process, she had lost her life. While Pericles lost himself to despair, he was informed that his wife would need to be thrown overboard to quell the storm. So he placed her body within a large chest filled with jewels and spices, and the king penned a note that requested whomsoever found the queen's body to bury her body as he could not. He then cast his beloved wife into the sea, where it washed up on the shores of Ephesus. The chest was found by a lord, Saruman, who immediately attempted to revive Thysa when he beheld her beauty. To his great surprise, it worked. Thysa returned to life, and she was so distraught at never being able to see her husband again that she pledged herself to the service of the goddess Diana and hid from the world. Meanwhile, Pericles returned to Tarsus with his daughter, whom he named Marina because she was born on the sea. He left her in the care of the governor of Tarsus as he was an old friend, and then he went to resume his rightful place on the throne. The governor's wife, Dionysa, was a scornful woman who hated Marina because she was more beautiful than her own daughter and began to plot to have Marina killed. She sent a servant off with Marina to kill her and dispose of her corpse. But while the two were traveling, they encountered pirates who stole Marina for themselves. The pirates took her to Mytilene and sold her on the slave market. Marina, however, was so graceful and beautiful that the young governor, Lysimachus, fell in love with her. He wished to have her for himself, and would have married her if not for her humble origins. When Pericles came back to Tarsus to visit his daughter, he found Dionysa had created a monument in her memory, fully believing that she was slain, and he was informed of this tragedy. So deep was Pericles' despair that he left on a ship once again, wearing only a cloth sack, and he swore an oath that he would never cut his hair or wash his face again. For three months he stood on the deck of the ship and refused to speak even a single word to anyone. The ship docked in Mytilene, completely by happenstance, and Lysimachus came on board the ship to find out where it had come from. 
Upon boarding, he was informed of the man on the deck of the ship, and so he sent for Marina to help cheer the man and snap him out of his state. She sang to him and told him of her own tale. When Pericles heard her tale, he finally looked upon her and saw that it was his daughter. Upon finding his daughter, he fainted, and while he was unconscious, he received a vision from the goddess Diana. She told him to seek out the maiden priests in her temple in Ephesus and tell them of his wife. So Pericles immediately set off for Ephesus and did as the goddess told him. There he discovered his lost wife Thysa, and together they were happy once again. Their daughter Marina married Governor Lysimachus and became the princess of Mytilene. The End